last time on Dice Funk. We're we're traveling deeper into the um uh the the root system of this tree, getting uh, all these little like uh, vine root <laughs> fingers wrapping uh, them around us as we like trudge deeper and deeper um, to lay like, all light is kind of blocked out, and then they start to recede. Uh, slowly letting the light back in as we continue to to walk until we are transported into the mind palace. There is no roll needed. The voice is coming from the body of uh, the person incinerated in this room. They say, I'm so sorry. And you start to see the fire itself sort of lift off of the body and split in two. Uh, Hylia lifts the, the bundle of swords, one of them still glowing, like as if it has, you know, uh, some kind of ongoing power over the elemental, is going to roll, I think, intimidation, and just say, state your name. What is your unfinished business? 21. They are going to immediately cower. You know, like, imagine sort of like a, like a game where your character can now, like, you know, maybe like an MMO or something like that where your character could hit like various emotions for poses or whatever. This is absolutely like immediately turning into like from static into like pleading for themselves, like on their knees, hands up in the air. Uh, and the the elemental just says, I'm sorry, Duma, I'm sorry. The bunny did it? Oh my gosh. I think Dumas is the name of the rabbit's owner. You are able to determine that, yes, this body has been burned to a crisp. This is a pretty open and shut case, uh, detective. Uh, but as you investigate this body, as you determine more, you see that there is a part on the, fla- the face where skin is starting to flake off. And at first it is, it is very light, almost as like someone brushed up against it. But slowly it starts to increase more and more until giant pieces of it are sort of breaking off. And slowly this burnt face reveals another face underneath. One that is pale white with featureless empty eyes. You guys ever see that video that's uh, called uh, the fastest hot dog shooter in the West? No. It's it's a guy who like swallows the hot dogs into his throat and then launches them into the air. I think about that a lot. I... You've you've spoiled one of my enemies for this season, then I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Before we talk about the the campaign we're doing. It is my solemn duty to inform you all that in addition to the five Baby Geniuses films <laughs> that are on Tubi, oh God. there's also Baby Geniuses Baby Squad Investigators, a 13-episode season of television. Uh, it appears <laughs> that it has been canceled. So it's a big uh, a bit day of mourning. Big sad. Yeah. Big sad in the Baby Geniuses <laughs> fandom. People talk about <laughs> Firefly deserved a second season, but I don't know why everybody talk about Baby Squad investigators. So, th- so we're never going to find out who the Baby Zodiac killer was? <laughs> I have a feeling it was John Voight. What does he get out of this? Is he Does he own shares in Big Baby? <laughs> what, what, is his, what is his motive? These were made in 2013? Why? Why? <laughs> Why? This Why can't... must we keep getting cursed and plagued by the baby geniuses? <laughs> Did, like, John Voight si- sign some kind of contract where they're like, we'll let you be a national treasure, but you need to do baby geniuses every time we call you. You can never let that phone go unanswered. You're in it for life. <laughs> what is baby geniuses on speed dial. I Hold on. I need to save this image and share it with everybody because this is... This is just a wild visual to be looking at right here. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you think Wet Team feels every time they see this chat? It's nothing but baby Jesus pictures. <laughs> <laughs> they should feel jealous. 
They wish they had this many baby geniuses. I'm just gonna type in baby geniuses reboot and see if anyone's like feeling out that sort of <laughs> that sort of style right now. Yeah. <laughs> John, I'm gonna just Google baby geniuses John Voigt. Fucking why? <laughs> 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 the first answer was you couldn't make Super Babies Baby Geniuses 2 today because this movie fucking sucks and no one wants to see that shit. <laughs> it's so confusing because <sighs> what is the name yeah. of this movie? Baby Geniuses, Baby 3 Geniuses, BSI Baby Squad Investigators. Like, you made up the acronym. You didn't have to spell it out. You could just be a line in the movie, but the title looks so confusing. Also, <laughs> None of the babies are important. The only credit is John Voigt, whose head hovers <laughs> in the corner of the screen like a Death Star. Oh my god. I think you're gonna be sick. He he does look a little bit like that Palpatine guy. John Voigt's kind of got like an old man baby face. Somehow, John Voigt has returned. For <laughs> <laughs> another baby genius. If we talk about this enough, you eventually have to incorporate it into the plot. I feel like. No. <laughs> You see, the babies are on dry land because babies can't swim yet. <laughs> Wait, would the plot be all the baby geniuses died? <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get started with the, the show, we're going to take one last time to introduce ourselves because some people who are listening to this and are like, oh, is the baby geniuses talk over? I'm going to tune out now. Uh, they might still not know who all of our voices is. So one last time, my name is Quinn Larios. I am the GM for this season. Uh, you can find my work over at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. Uh, Dan. I'm pointing at you now. You have to talk. Hi, I'm Dan. Uh, I am not a online personality. I am a IT uh, slave. Um, I have repeatedly referred to myself as the diversity hire of Dice Funk, and I feel like I should just reveal the bit at this point. Uh, I am the only non-Jewish person at my real-life job, and that is one of the main reasons I was hired, because they needed someone to be able to work on Hanukkah. <laughs> I don't know that's a reveal. I don't know what you think you're revealing. I I, rem I saw people in the Discord get confused every time I referred to myself as a diversity hire. There you go. That that's that's my real life uh, status. I'm playing Stranger. He's a he's a little weird pumpkin guy. And um, no no no. I've got I've got a diet coke here. That's pretty good. Austin, over to you. Oh, it's me, Austin Yorsky, patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky is where you find all my stuff. Mostly this show you're listening to and Spew Punk, which is a variety comedy thing we do. We must talk about movies and books. It's pretty fun. It's just a dollar, just a single American dollar for literally at this point over 100 hours of content. It's pretty – if you ever want movie recommendations, it's sick. Um, Austin Yorsky everywhere, easy to find. I'm playing Hialeah the Treant Fighter, uh, level five uh, tree lady gentlemen a baobab tree that's all you need to know about me right now i think austin yorsky and highly the tree all right <laughs> uh i'm sarah i'm cosmignon most places you can support me at patreon.com uh slash cosmignon c-o-s-m-i-g-n-o-n i do a web comic called runaway Dracaina. i am currently trying to make a sticker shop work it's cosmignon.square.site uh, you can also just support me, like, by giving me a tip over on coffee, same name, like, same name everywhere. And I am playing, uh, Lillian, the Dryad Bard level five Dryad Bard College of Drama, I like to call it, but it's technically the College of Spirits. Mm. All right. Well, do you guys remember what happened last time? There's like a corpse that's talking to us. <laughs> Somebody burned to death. <laughs> So you guys uh, started up your vibe check. You found several clues. Uh, I hope someone took notes because I've forgotten everything I told you. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's only half a joke. I did have it saved. Um, but you ended. You, you fought a bunch of fire elementals. And there was a flamey body. And then the body started cracking. And you saw a completely uh, white face underneath. Uh, and I want to know what everybody's thoughts are. G Willikers. <laughs> Golly gee willikers 
Uh, <laughs> I think we established last episode that Hialeah Leah has a, like a negative uh, to figuring shit like this out. So she stands back and says, uh, "Ah, yes, this is a very common reaction with the the t- lower tubular body. You got, you got it. Pushing you, pushing you two forward." <laughs> I, I think strangers like ah, uh, a uh, uh, mystical house, spirits of a person's inner demons manifesting as tormenting specters, a talking corpse, reminds me of home. Um, <laughs> yeah, can I can I investigate this court? Like, is it? I think it said something last time. I think it asked for like it said like I'm so sorry or something. I believe so. Yes. Um, is it like is it like looking around? Is it like looking at me? What's it what's it doing right now? No, it right now it's just laying there like it's a corpse. Uh does it look like Roman from what we've seen in the pictures? Uh give me let's start off with a little fun roll. Let's do a history check. Okie dokie. Eleven. Uh that's all you needed to beat was a ten. Uh no, this does not look like uh Roman at all. This, in fact, looks like uh, a sort of more feminine-leaning face. Okay. Uh, so this this seems uh, surprising to you. Like, I, I, I've been wanting to... Um, Lil- Lillian's, like, looking over this person's body, and I think Faye wants to maybe do the Arcana, because, like... I assume like the the pitch white eyes might be like a dead person thing, but it seems significant that like the charred bits have cracked away to reveal this person's face, and it feels like something magic is afoot. Uh-huh. So let's see. Arcana. Yeah, absolutely. Arcana. Fuck three. Uh, unfortunately, and you just don't detect anything magic. So. We do know that he's the only survivor of a um, boating run that ran across some, I believe it was Kuatoa? Yes. I don't know if you're asking me the DM or if you're asking your fellow players in character. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit slipping back and forth. It was um, it, it was a Kuatoa pirate ship. I wouldn't be surprised if whoever this was was at one point a member of that crew. Or a passenger on the ship. Do you, is there, do you think, anything uh, fruitful to gain from a religion check? It's the nature of ghosts and uh, un, uh, uneasy spirits and fiery uh, revenge or apologizers? Uh, sure, you could roll a religion check. All right. 23? 23 is a pretty good score. Uh, so... You have been on the island, I believe, the longest of anybody. So maybe uh, at some point you've had conversations with Mox, Speaker Mox, to some extent, uh, to know how vibe checks kind of work internally, which is very much that they can act as sort of uh, a representation of someone's personal feelings. So in a situation where there's a lot of mysteries around, it's usually because someone is hiding something specifically Um you guys seem to have picked up on that. Uh, the specific sort of laments that this person has noted, though, would be the thing that kind of uh, pulls you in a different direction. Uh, if you think this is someone who's just trying to hide that they've been a pirate in their life, uh, you'd think that would be the piece they're hiding. But instead, it's it seems as though this body you found is sort of the thing they've been trying to hide. I will say with the 23 on religion, I want to put a pin in this uh, kind of for future character development stuff because Hialeah is a level five fighter, but it's not because she has like a passion for martial arts. She's just big and bonks people. It's it's not like, a, you know, she, this is like a lifelong passion of hers, but something she is getting more and more interested in is religion. Uh, like she took an immediate interest in the big tree and its powers, and I'm just flagging that. I am going to be taking, I, I believe, presumably, uh, uh, t- uh, unless something changes, I'm going to be taking all my future levels in cleric. Um, and so that's, I think, the beginning of this journey on screen is her being like, oh, this tree has some wild powers. It's letting me see some things that people were not meant to see. And I'm way more interested in this than I am swinging a bundle of swords at people. <laughs> um, 
I, I have one one last question, I guess. So you, you've indicated that this like face is incredibly pale, right? Um, weird question, I guess, from a charred corpse. Does it seem like like almost like like pallid, like something that's been in water for a while? Like that kind of pale? Um, no, I wouldn't say that it comes to you like a, a sickly or a natural pale. Like this is a natural to us because like if you were this pale in real life, the sun's rays would just like incinerate and explode your skin. That's uh, just me. Is, yeah, <laughs> that's just you. Uh, but it, this is a fantasy world where, you know, characters have all sorts of different skin tones and colors and stuff like that. It just seems like this person's skin tone is like sheen white. Oh, I totally misread that. I thought this was like uh, some kind of supernatural thing. Uh, maybe because we're in uh, uh, Silent Hill mode. I was like, oh, this is the evil within goo. Oh, Quinn hasn't played evil within. Why would I assume that? I'll put a picture <laughs> of evil within goo. This is how people look in the evil within, the video game by the creator. That's cum. <laughs> the creator of Resident <laughs> Evil, Shinji Mikami. But when stuff starts getting supernatural, they get like paper white, like they're covered in you know whiteout or something. Anyway. I mean, I would say that is pretty close to what this looks like it's just not on i i want to note like i'm assuming evil within exists in a universe where people just also can't look like that you, you know what i know the answer to that question and you're not going to like how long it would take to explain the world <laughs> um is this person like a shadar kai or something or are they, are they human all right uh this is a good uh, opportunity for a history check Oh balls! Could I could I also history check this because I, this, I am this, curious. This is everybody. Okay, this is everybody. I think rolling twenty two, seven, which looks it's it's Six. scary red. I think that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. wow, uh, that is a fail, unfortunately, from the party and a botch from um, Cosmignon or uh, from Lillian. So. Oh, wow. How does this manifest? So I'll say um, right now you guys are trying to like put your heads together and start thinking this out. You're like, wait, is like, is this something we, we know of? And in that moment, um, there's like, again, the house feels like it responds to you in, in the fact that you, you have had like this critical failure in life <laughs> and a spark ignites <laughs> in the room. And I had mentioned before that there's like fire crawling down like the walls and everything, but it had just been, it had been waiting. It had been sitting there for you. And in this moment, it all starts up immediately again, really unnervingly quickly. You suddenly see it's almost like moving at you. Like it's like, it's coming for you all at once. And in this moment, you find yourselves immediately covered in this, this blaze. Like it, it comes at you till the point happens where you can't see anything except fire anymore oh okay i'm can i'm gonna run from the oh. room oh no I'm, yeah I'm... <laughs> fucking get out of there hit the bricks <laughs> yeah uh unfortunately uh this fire picks up you seem to have no idea where you're going as you're you're trying to run through this blaze but i will note it doesn't it doesn't seem to hurt it's just very terrifying as this fire very quickly kind of engulfs you in this this moment uh before it slowly starts to dissipate away and you find yourselves in the fresh ocean sea like on a boat or in the water <laughs> man i really should have the bo yeah you know what the botch is gonna be you won't you don't start on the boat you both you all spawn just slightly <laughs> off the side of the boat and you all fall into the water so there is a boat next to you um but you're all gonna have to figure out how you're gonna get onto it God, fuck. I, I, do we just spawn in air and fall because yeah. if so i think i think strangers crow like a cartoon just stays in the air as he hits the water i'm just imagining yeah, lillian was like trying to run out of the room and that's like all of us running around is why like we, we like ran off the spawn point <laughs> into the water. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I st maybe strength saving throw to grab the railing uh, and just try to plant my? I, I literally have roots, so 
Uh -huh. That's my suggestion, is just to try to uh, be imm an immovable object in the moments of uh, going. Because I'm running from the fire, I think I'm exiting the door of the room into the hallway, but I'm going off the edge of the boat, because we're, we're in the dream space over here. And do I, can I just like wrap my limbs, and, you know, my, my branches and roots around things and just hold on? Sure, you can give me a, a try for that. Give me a, a strength uh, saving throw. Siri, no. <laughs> Siri, yes, 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can do that. You plant yourself much like a tree. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough to you, you're like, huh, this is not a humongous boat. Do you, this look, almost looks like a, um, yeah, sorry, let me, let me correct myself there. Yeah, you absolutely can plant yourself on the side of this. All right. Yeah. So I'm look. I'm just looking over at the edge as my two uh, unanchored companions do a sick flip into the ocean. Uh, can I? I have a spell called Thorn Whip. Normally, it's used to like you you attack somebody and uh, you pull them closer to you. Can I try to like whip the railing and pull myself up? Sure. Give me uh, give me an attack roll. Is that how it works, or is it a, a saving throw? Yeah, it's an uh, it's an attack. Yeah, give me that attack roll. 17. Yeah, absolutely. Describe it for me. Paint me this picture. How are you, how are you Indiana Jones in your way onto this ship? <laughs> I think it's very like Errol Flynn, uh, like classic high seas pirate movie where like uh, Stranger <laughs> runs through the fire <laughs> into the midair uh, and starts to like fall and whips out his... Um, uh, his arm, uh, which elongates into long barbed thorns, uh, thorny vines that wrap around the, the, I guess like the mast or whatever, uh, like, uh, he can grab onto and just in a, like a, a swirl, uh, wraps around it and plants himself back onto the, the main deck. There you go. All right. We have two people on board. What does Lillian do? So my first thought is immediately, like, try to grab hold onto something, like, before I fall in the water. I don't have fancy roots or any kind of attacks that could be used as, like, a whip. All I've got is, like, maybe I can, like, try to plant my dagger into the side of the boat, which I assume is made of wood that could be punctured. <laughs> sure. Uh, if we're going to use our daggers, I think we're going to do, do an attack roll as well. A 23 absolutely describe this in all of its glory so i think what happens is that we all like spawn in and we're falling and the other two do their thing and then lillian like uh in mid, mid fall like kind of pulls out their like fancy little theater looking dag like th theater prop looking dagger but it does do real damage and like try to like spin around and like jam it into the side of the boat at like the first like point that uh, they can get it in there and then from there I guess if Faye needs to do something to like climb up the rest of the way or or maybe Faye calls out like hey can one of you two lend a hand yeah I mean I have very large limbs in fact I have a, a feature called powerful build where I can carry things as if I was large because I'm a player character so I'm technically medium uh, but because I'm a tree like for game stuff I can just pick things up that nor that would normally cause a check. So I if I can just reach down, if you're knifing up the side of the boat and just lift you in my powerful branch, then I would like to invoke powerful build. Yeah, absolutely. You can you can grab uh, Lillian right up, and Fair is uh, up on top of the boat with everybody else. Which, uh, if you give me a moment here, I'm gonna try to describe this for you. You guys are on top of a pirate ship. You can tell as it has a Jolly Roger flown at high mast up at the top of its 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 sails. Uh, it is a Jolly Roger, curiously, with the head submerged in what looks to you like a fish bowl, uh, and there is a large skeletal like fish bone, uh, sort of figurehead uh, up at the front of the ship that like the head the like the fish head kind of sticks up over the prowl so you're saying the 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 thing at the front the is yes, this a is like, this a one piece thing i mean one piece does weird things with its ships but this is not specifically a one piece uh boat this isn't a one piece reference while this is while this is a pirate <laughs> ship this is not 
a One Piece inspired moment. I just like the idea of going from like haunted house into a high spirit pirate adventure. Could, could you like just repeat the description real quick? I was kind of like typing notes for the other thing we just did. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So there is a a pirate ship that has a Jolly Roger sail at the top. The fish head, like the, the, the skull of the Jolly Roger looks like it's submerged in a fish tank and then the crossbones are behind it. And then it has uh, like a fish bone kind of wrapping up as it's, it's figurehead up the front of the ship and the head of the, the, the fish bone like pokes up over the top. So you can see it visibly from the deck. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, and there are a lot of Kuatoa running around this ship. There is movement going around, and um, every so often you hear a very big splash. Are they uh, they throwing people off the side? It does look like that. Yeah, it does, it does look like they are throwing people off the side of it. They they feeding people to sharks. Is that what's happening here? <laughs> um, you see one person kind of uh, standing at sort of the uh, uh, up by the, the steering mast looking over at everything. And it is a Kuatoa slightly larger uh, than the rest. Uh, it is a blobfish Kuatoa whose head is submerged in a fish tank. Oh my God, blobfish. Oh, uh, if, if it's if it's got a little fish tank on its head, does that mean that it looks like how blobfish should actually look? <laughs> yes. Not exploding? <laughs> <laughs> I like how if you try to look up, like, what does a normal blobfish look like? All you can get is artist representations, because we've never seen one not exploded. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, ooh, hold on one sec here. I'm gonna pop this guy in there. This is, yeah, this is one of the artist's interpretations of it. it. It's not much better, really. What are you talking about? It's a little right. guy. It, it looks roughly the same as the exploded blobfish. No! <laughs> It, it's like, it looks like a Zelda creature. You look roughly the same as the blobfish exploded. <laughs> it's like what if Danny DeVito's head was a fish? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's because of my condition. <sighs> oh, no, it's like Seaman, the classic uh, Dreamcast game. Oh, yeah. yeah you're going to be real. It's going to be very uncomfortable when this guy starts talking in a normal voice then, won't it then? When you, when you say normal voice, do you mean Leonard Nimoy, voice of Seaman from Dreamcast Seaman? <laughs> Yar, mateys, what you be doing down there? Oh, that's not Leonard As this anymore. pirate <laughs> looks and points at you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Do you guys get confused if these are, like, real people or not? It's a bit odd. I don't really know how to handle this. Um, hello there. We're simply checking in, I suppose. There, checking in on what? Here to plunder me booty? Here to stop me cool rituals? Yeah, I don't be thinking so, you don't. Why does everyone think I want to plunder their booty? I can't just have a normal conversation these days. Everyone's immediately thinking I'm after the booty. It's really prejudicial. I'm sorry, do you think that only three of us are going to be able to steal all of your booty and uh, stop your rituals? That's a bit... It's flattering for sure, but it seems a bit uh, outside of our capabilities at this time. You you find, uh, or you see rather, that this, this Kuatoa starts uh, marching their way down towards you. You hear like a lot of jingling as this person approaches, and you realize they, they, they have a peg leg, but they don't need it. Like, <laughs> their knee is, and everything below is still there. It's just like kind of hanging <laughs> off to the side, almost like they've glued this peg leg on for effect. Oh my god. I- I-, I tried to bully Quinn into change- changing this to pirate season at the last minute after he watched One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> this-, this is for you, Austin. I let a little bit of pirate season in. Uh, and they approach, and they're like, no, did any of you got the might to steal my booty? But ye are a curious lot. This be a tree, right? Or me eyes fail in thee. I'm just a regular lady. I'm just a normal person. I'm a, I'm a normal, we're in, innocent men. Normal men. <laughs> Your tree be talking a lot. It's suspicious. <laughs> 
sometimes <laughs> trees talk. I don't trust the ones that talk. Is this be another curse put to set us all not set upon all of us? Yeah. A curse, you say? And you mentioned a ritual. Yes! We be getting a curse recently. Quite unfortunate dealings there. You be a part of this? And there's one bulging eye kind of like pressed up against the fish tank looking at you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, actually, how about this? Uh, a stranger will say, you know, curses are rather common where I'm from. Maybe I can assist you. I doubt you want to keep... Uh, I had imagined you'd want to break the curse as soon as possible. How did you come to have it? Might I just add that I, as a bard, am a bit of a practitioner of uh, healing spells, spells that are supposed to help people rather than hurt them. So if you're under some kind of curse, maybe we could help, like Stranger said. I have an ability called All Eyes on You. This is my background feature as a far traveler. Um, I have seen many things and I've been many places and I can quote parlay this attention into access to people in places you might not otherwise have for you and your traveling companions. So if I can uh, leverage that, you know, my long life and uh, deep research into curses and stuff to uh, ensorcel these pirates with stories of uh, treasure and uh, whatever else they want to hear, I guess that would be my contribution would just be like. Oh, you know, oh, this reminds me of the, the great curse of 75. Uh, <laughs> if it weren't for that exorcist, you know, all those people would have perished. I can tell you how about the ritual if you'd like, but I would also like to know about yours. I don't want them to conflict, you know? So we got I got to figure out what your ritual is before you give you mine. Very interesting. Okay, well, if you're using a background feature of yours, I don't think you need to roll, but let's just do a roll between uh, Lillian and Stranger real quick for a persuasion check as you're trying to convince Captain Dolph here to, to tell you what he knows. Captain Dolph of the Judgment Day? <laughs> this this does appear to be the Judgment Day. At least it, it would be wild. The vibe check sends you to a completely different marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I got a 13. 15. 13. All right. 13 and 15. Those are both good enough to pass. Captain Dolph will uh, kind of sit down like he's going to lean up against the railing of the ship a little bit and be like, oh, curses be miserable business. Yes. It sounds like ye have all had a little part of it, little knowledge of it. It's a whole mess. We attack this ship, getting our prisoners, you know, speeding them to the sea, as you do. As you but do. But then, one of them, this girl in a cloak, she be cursed. Everywhere she goes, things be falling off the sides of railings, people be falling overboard, and not the good kind of falling overboard like we want, the bad kind that's like annoying, you have to fish them out. It's just a big mess. We like, oh, you know, she's cursed. Let's feed her to the ocean. But then one of the other prisoners was like, no, that's a bad omen. You shouldn't do that. And I was like, probably makes sense. So we're just waiting till we get to land to ship her off to curse some other land. It's a real miserable business being stuck with the curse, though. All right, so we've, uh, we have uh, ascertained that this person is the source of the curse, probably also the misfortune that started the fire, and that maybe Roman uh, saved this woman's life at the cost of many other lives, and that's why he felt bad about it. That's where I'm at. Uh, do we want to roll something? My, uh, my thing here is like to get a, maybe a look at, see if Roman or this person, uh, the mysterious cursed person, are physically here. Is that like a perception or... Yeah, my other thought is that he's talking about a ritual currently, so it sounds like he's trying to do something to maybe mitigate this. Uh, and Stranger will bring that up. And what is this ritual you you spoke of? Sure, okay. So we have a couple different things going on. Hylia wants to try to find uh, prisoners. Uh, rich, uh, Stranger wants to ask about the ritual. What does Lillian want to do? I think... Like, my first instinct was definitely also, like, wanting to look for uh, either Roman or this other person uh, who, like, just based on my notes, I'm assuming maybe is Dumas, but I, I can't be 100% sure yet. That's the only named character that we don't know who they are. <laughs> it was written on a rabbit, I believe. 
Yeah. She said it was, they said it was a, a girl. Uh, was this a, a young girl? Uh, so let's, let's take this one step at a time. So, uh, absolutely. Hialeah and Lillian can go and start to look for the prisoners. Um, I want to get a sense of how you're trying to do that. Like you, you have not been immediately met with hostility, despite the fact that this does seem to be a hostile pirate crew. You don't know if this is just kind of what the vibe checked has created for you or if, if there's like a failure state where suddenly if all of them will aggro to you or whatever. <laughs> so I want to know, how are you doing this? Are you just like nonchalantly looking around or are you just like, no, we're the big bosses here. Like I'm just going to start opening doors and things like that. My instinct is, uh, this is like a, a big pirate crew, right? I wanted to like, if they're not aggro at us right now, maybe like walk around and ask a couple of them like, Hey, have you heard about this, uh, girl with a curse? I'm trying to find where she might be so that we could possibly talk to her. I have an ability called Hidden Step. As a bonus action, I can turn invisible. So I would like to do that to look around without getting hassled by any pirates. <laughs> just just a big tree slowly fading out of view. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, oh, the trees disappeared now. <laughs> I should be hitting the room a little bit harder. The tree's gone. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Don't worry about it. Trees do that too, sometimes too. As a bonus action, you magically turn invisible <laughs> until you attack, make a damage roll, or force someone to make a saving throw. You can use this trait a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. So I can keep re- reapplying it. I think it's like an enchantment on one of her swords, or she just like whispers to it, just like, uh, you know. Uh, well, I'm trying to, what would be the funniest thing uh, to, <laughs> to say to the, when you go self mode? Peace out. <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. And I disappear. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh god! Oh no! <laughs> uh, yeah. And then she just disappears. And then she can just walk around uh, un- un- uh, unbothered to see if uh, what's going on. Okay. So we're gonna put a pin on stranger right now. I wanna I wanna give uh, Lillian and Haley a moment here. So uh, Lillian, you wanna talk to some of the other like deckhands basically and, and try to ask them for information. Uh, most of them seem to be at work doing the the required things you need to just like keep a ship moving, like making sure the rigging is intact, you know, making sure that they're sailing in the direction they want to go, that you know everything's going. But you do see that there are some kind of marching. Uh, in and out of um, uh, what do you call like the inside of a ship? The cabin, the I guess. The hull, yeah. Um, and there are some that are like, you know, making sure that the cannons are, you know, ready and all this sort of stuff. So anyone you're trying to ask is going to like first meet you with just like, uh, ah, you look at the prisoners. Uh, they're inside the, the hold. You know where they are, right? Ah, yes, of course. You must keep them all in one particular place. That makes sense. That makes sense. Where is the hold? Can I just go there? Do I need permission? Do I need someone to escort me? Uh, escort? Are you lost? Like, what? Do you, I got stuff to do here. Oh, I'm not lost. I'm just asking questions. Well, I want to be a little bit of a hassle because I don't like people asking me questions. Do I come to your job and ask you what you're doing when you're and he's just going to look at you. He's like, I have no idea what you do for a living, actually. <laughs> but the point is, I, you know, I'm, I'm working here. What do you want from me? This is just like Baby Genius's BSI, where they continue to stack boxes as the Baby Geniuses question them. <laughs> <laughs> what a classic moment that we all love. <laughs> that everybody has context for. Just like, I think, I, I think I've gotten everything I can out of you, buddy. <laughs> Oh, well, I hope you have a great day then. You know, take care of yourself. Hey, look, I don't want you to feel like, you know, I'm being rude to you for any reason. I'm a laborer, though, you know? We just gotta, we gotta keep to a quota. So, you know, take care of yourself. Lillian just nodding very sagely, like, "Mm, yeah, that makes sense, that makes sense. And, 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 like, they mentioned, like, a hold. Like, I assume that's, like, going in to, like, the inside the ship and maybe asking around for the people that are coming in and out of there. Yeah. So uh, uh, Faye's going to do that. Now, are you going with Hialeah? Because Hialeah, that's like where you were headed was towards the inside of the ship. Yeah, I don't want us to both be doing the same thing. So if if that's one one lead, then I will just uh, look, I will uh, invisibly look around for other clues, I guess. Um, <laughs> sure. 
All right, uh, Lillian, uh, we'll, we'll continue with you for a second here. As you're you're going towards the inside of the ship, uh, you will see like a very like sort of like defeated person being dragged out of the uh, out of the insides of the ship, and they are going to be dragged towards the side of the ship where there is a gangplank. Um, there is a moment there, though, where the door does not seem to have anybody in it, so you can just slip on through. Oh. It's a good thing this is a uh, magical construct of a memory, because I feel like my character, if this was real, would just be like, all right, sushi time, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> rolling yeah. initiative. Yeah, just like Lillian has to like remind herself, like, okay, this, isn't, this isn't technically real, this is as real as it can be, but it's not real real. These aren't real people they're just inside the mind real <laughs> that, that, that happens for long enough that they almost miss their chance but then they go through <laughs> okay uh hi Leah. what what do you want to look for specifically is there something you're trying to uh, observe in in detail um i mean if a stranger's talking to the captain and uh lillian is going indoors then i want to look at the ritual i guess is the only thing we aren't looking at um is this religion sure. religion is once again something i'm going to be specializing in in the season so anything i can know about that learn from that uh i would like to roll religion it's a 23 okay so I guess the specific question I want to ask you is your, you know, you, you Austin have also picked up on the, 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 the idea that they're going to throw this person into the ocean mm -hmm. yep. uh, and, and kill them. Essentially, you are fine with letting that happen. You, you, you are correct that this is a mind palace. None of these people are truly real, but I, I, I want to check as this is, you know, uh, something where you are observing, uh, at least facsimiles of people in in uh, what is about to be a death situation. Yeah, I think like in the first episode we established when uh, people are in danger, she will jump in, like when the the dandelion attacked Lillian. But she knows this isn't real, and also she fancies herself something of a, like an objective, uh, like chronicler of truth to you know whatever the reality of that is so she's like standing by and she's gonna watch this person get fed to the shark and like take notes like if anything like the ideal situation here um with the 23 would be like i would like to learn something from this that i can then use you know like later i'm casting some kind of fucked up ritual and telling myself like uh yes uh the detachment of a journalist has led me to truth and knowledge how professional of me Okay, so yeah, you can watch as this person is uh, hoisted up onto the gangplank and then at sword point, march down it until they just jump off. Uh, there is a small scream before the you hear a splash and then uh, there is just sort of the struggling until there isn't anymore. And as you're watching this, uh, you don't see like a shark come up and just chomp this person or anything like that. You're, you're not watching sort of... Uh, like, oh, we have to feed this person to the Kraken or whatever. Uh, it's, it seems as though this person is being consumed by the sea. Um, but in particular, you have a very, very good religion check. You have a 23. There is a feeling of power here that is quite familiar to you. In fact, it feels not unlike the power of the Banyan tree back on the island. Oh, the ocean is a tree. <laughs> the tree is an ocean. <laughs> this is how Alan Wake ends. That's <laughs> trees are like <laughs> oceans. Oceans are like trees. Everyone knows this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna cut over to Stranger, and I believe you just uh, you were asking about the ritual. Yeah, he Stranger's asking. Um, so what is this ritual you speak of? I'm hearing some splashing. I assume a sacrifice of some sort. Yeah, you know, it's the old standard. You sacrifice people, try to make, you know, this is like old Kuatoa stuff, you know. This is goes way back. We used to use it to make new gods, but that's like not as cool anymore because before it was like, oh, let's make this gold being powerful. But instead, we came to the realization, why not make the ocean powerful, yeah? And then the ocean can give us powers. This is kind of stupid, like cutting out the middleman, you know? Lore note, is this the Great Eastern Sea that the island is in, or is this a different ocean? This uh, this appears to be a different ocean. All right. 
Unless you, unless you would like this to be your ocean, I would no. try not to give you anything. <laughs> no, I prefer this. <laughs> so is this your general modus operandi? You capture a ship, take their booty, and then huck the passengers overboard as you travel until the next ship? Seems More like a less. tidy. Seems like a tidy system. Yeah. Plus, when you get to an island or whatever, or beach, you know, you, you party for a little bit, you rest, you know, stretch your legs, uh, you know, have a good time, and then it's right back to it, you know? It's, it's, look, it ain't the best life, you know? If I could be a professional cloud watcher, mwah! He tries to do, like, the, the Italian hand gesture thing, but his fingers just thunk against his <laughs> fistful. Uh, but he's like, mm-hmm. you know, this is, this is a good life for me. And what if you don't complete the ritual? I don't follow. Let's say you go too long without a sacrifice. What happens then? Are you saying we might be under the number of people we need to sacrifice to the ocean? We did lose a person with the cursed girl. No, I'm just curious. What are the ramifications of such a loss? Careful, Quinn, before you answer this question, because you might make a rule for pirate season that we have to live with. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I imagine it wouldn't feel like the sea respects you enough, you know? And maybe the sea wouldn't be giving you as many blessings as you want. All right, living sea that must be placated. Okay, notes, notes, (laughs) notes, notes. (laughs) Thank you for illuminating me as to your ways, sir. I'm sorry, Captain. Absolutely, Captain Dorf of the Judgment Day, as you were. Uh, did we have the date of when um, the, uh, the they they got rescued from pirates, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm assuming the pirates didn't survive that encounter, based off the article. Yes, the, the pirates were killed. Uh, do did the I'm assuming the newspaper had like a date on it, right? Uh sure, yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, the captain if he happens to have the date. <laughs> yeah, Quinn's like, actually, this is completely unrelated. Isn't that weird? <laughs> this is like another different... The, this tree's fucking with you guys. It's a different date altogether. Uh, yeah, the dates match up. I don't I don't want to establish what yeah. our in-universe date month system is, but mm-hmm. this does line up. Be like, ah, yes, it'd be uh, Blue Timber Blifteen. <laughs> yeah. I think Stranger strokes his chin thoughtfully for a moment uh and he's he's like considering what happens if he tells him he's going to die (laughs) oh my god (laughs) interesting i mean you can you can absolutely approach that um yeah i think stranger needs to understand more about what exactly is happening in these vibe checks so he's going to look at the captain and say Captain, I have no interest in lying to you, and I have no reason to threaten you, but I can tell you you're going to die today. (laughs) I think he's just going to uh, uh, sort of, he's smaller than, how actually, how tall is is Stranger? He's not particularly tall. I think he's like, I don't know, 5'7". Okay, so uh, th- shockingly, this Goato, which is very small, is able to like reach up to your shoulder and be like, Lad, I think you've been baking in the sun for too long. Ain't nobody a match for Captain Dorf of the Judgment Day. <laughs> is that what a, a cannon shot comedically tears a <laughs> hole in his chest? <laughs> Oh, man, I wish. <laughs> if I wanted to completely cut out a combat encounter for you guys, I would just have him get blown to hell right now. <laughs> um, I want to go back over to Lillian. You are now kind of going through the, the the guts of the ship, so to, so to speak. And if you... Uh, or rather, yeah, L- Lillian... Uh, Faye is sort of going through the guts of the ship. How do you want to approach finding this hold? Let's see. So I'm thinking about how to find this hold. I'm trying to... Have we done in... Have we... I I forget genuinely. Have we done an investigation check yet? Because I was planning on doing that. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. 13. 
Yeah. Uh, so I will uh, say that you are able to figure this out because there are people being regularly like there are guards regularly kind of passing you and going somewhere and then they come out dragging somebody and you're able to kind of follow the chain of that. Just just slowly going through the guts of the ship, following when th- these fucking pirates are like dragging new prisoners out to get thrown out. It's, it, 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 it's just a mantra at this point. It's not real. Not real. Not yeah. real. Not real. <laughs> and you will approach, uh, essentially, uh, a prison cell where there are two people inside. One of them looks a lot like Harper who you met earlier. The other person is in a cloaked hood and they are holding a rabbit. A stuffed rabbit. Lillian is going to not run over. Uh, they, doesn't, they, 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 they don't want to like scare these people. But like, a uh, quick walk over to this prison cell and uh, just ask these people point blank just like i've been looking for people that i think might be you two am i speaking to roman and dumas uh the individual uh, who looks like Ro- uh, harper is like roman's the name a pleasure to meet you and he's going to hold out his hand uh and he seems very tired <laughs> Uh, but he is, he's going to say, it's always uh, good to meet a uh, new face around here. You you more prisoners? Are they going to sacrifice you to the ocean as well? Just, not, just uh, Lillian will uh, shake his hand and be like, uh, thankfully not prisoners and hopefully not thrown into the ocean anytime soon. I hope we don't make these people mad. Uh, the other person, the person, the cloak does not seem to answer you and seems actually very nervous. It sort of turns away from you. And uh, Roman is just going to say, like, I wouldn't mind her very much, you know, shy folk, but I let her know she ain't got to worry about being sacrificed. I had to talk there up there with the captain, let him know a bad idea to put somebody who's cursed. I don't think she's really cursed. I think that's more of like a her thing. But, you know, I don't think you're going to be throwing her into the ocean now. And that's always a good thing. That is always a good thing. I would like to be able to talk to her, but it doesn't seem like she might be in the mood for it, and I want to respect that. Do you think you would be allowed to tell me anything more about what's going on with this uh, young lady? Uh, sure. I mean, I can tell you what I know. I ain't a whole heck of a lot, but, you know, it's always nice, nice to be a pleasure for other people. Just you are already a pleasure. Oh, shucks. Well, you're pretty good yourself. Oh, thank you. Are we friends? <laughs> oh, look at me making friends here at the very end of my life. Ain't I blessed? Just this this will not be the end of your life if I have anything to say about it. Well, unless you're going to kill all them pirates, I, I think we got a little bit of a, something to, to keep ourselves concerned with. But, you know, no time like the present to pass some time. Just, we will figure something out. Now, about the information that you might know right now. Sure, I mean, we were all on a ship trying to explore our way across the world, this new world. It's crazy. This is the ocean biome. It's, it's huge. It takes forever to get across this. But, you know, we take it our time, maybe trying to find someplace new to, like, sell at or whatever. And then, lo and behold, this big old pirate ship came up, snatched all of us up. You know, I see, I, I see here the girl in the hood. You know, I get it. I understand social cues kind of giving me the vibe. Doesn't want to be around people. But she has what seems like the worst look. And I, I've been there too. You know, I, I've broken a fair share of my mirrors in my lifetime. I've walked underneath the ladder. And, you know, it took me a good two weeks before my cowlick went down. So I'll tell you what, I understand what it's like to have a little run of the bad luck. But these pirates really made a big deal out of it. Really thought there was something uh, fishy going on. So, um... Yeah, seemed like they were going to sacrifice her immediately, but I told them not to do that. You know, just spit, you know, convince them, use a little golden tongue, give them that charm, and uh, it sounds like they're going to hold off on it. Well, I'm very impressed that you were able to convince them. 
And then Lillian's thinking about like a curse that would cause you bad luck. That sounds like I like would trying to figure out would, would that be more of like an arcana or a religion thing to try and think if I would know anything about something like that. Uh, I would say both could potentially be applicable. It just, I think I would go with whatever one you think Lillian herself would be more interested in, in like exploring as an avenue. I think Lillian would probably be more interested in the Arcana Avenue just because Lillian's uh, very like in, in, into the magic aspect of things in general more than like religion. Sure. Fifteen. Fifteen. So um, I will say that there are certainly spells that can, you know, curse people with bad luck, so to speak. Um, but oftentimes it is very difficult to differentiate what is someone's, you know, like an active magical ritual placed on them for bad luck and what is what someone has kind of construed as bad luck without being able to sort of see it in action for yourself. So... In this moment, you, you've sort of asked some questions. Uh, you are going to see a couple guards uh, from the pirate crew come down, and they're going to be like, it's time. And they're going to, each one's going to take Roman by the arms, and they're going to be like, time to go into the ocean. And he's going to be like, well, it sure was nice talking to you, stranger. I hope you have a good one. In all logical ways, Lillian knows that this isn't how Roman dies. But in, in the emotional sense, uh, Faye does want to try to stop the guards or slow them down. Like, hey, wait, 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 wait. I, wa- I, wa- I-, I need to keep talking to him. I am trying to figure out information I need from him and maybe will continue to need it for an unspecified period of time. Uh, give me a persuasion check. Uh, crit 26. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to say is you try to turn, you're like, Hey guards, I need to talk to this guy for a little bit longer. Uh, sort of giving off this whole spiel. And they stop for a moment before they seem like cosmically pulled forward. Like it feels like for a moment they, they stop to hear you. And then almost as though, sort of like puppetry is in motion. They begin marching again, taking Roman away. And uh, in this moment, you're like, well, that's weird. Like, I thought I was really successful. Uh, but you feel, uh, Lily feels a, a small tug on Fair's sleeve. And the hooded figure just says, I'm sorry. I, I didn't. I didn't mean for it to be like this. Just how old does this person look? Like, is this a actual, like a literal child, like holding us a little stuffed animal? Not a like child, child, but this looks like maybe like uh like on the older side of teenager, like eighteen, nineteen kind of range. Mm hmm. Just uh, Lil- Lillian looks at her like, N- no, it's not your fault. Don't worry. Just I try. Just everybody tries their best. I I, I think that there's, there's something weird going on here. But you know, we're good. just I I'm trying my best to get things worked out. It's not your fault. I promise. The figure's hood will like pull back, and you can see that uh, their face is pure white. Their eyes. No pupils, purely white, hair white. And she's going to look at you and say, no, I don't think you understand. This has to happen. This is how it happened. Just just Lillian like thoughtfully pauses and is like, do you know what's happening right now? She's going to uh, put her hood back up at that point and say, I didn't mean for this to happen. I'm sorry. Just, uh, just, just, it's just, just, if you didn't mean for it to happen, then, then, then it, I, 
just I can't I can't be mad at you. Okay, uh, I think I know what happened uh, at this point. Um, can I can I make my called shot? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you'd like to, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, Roman dies here. That girl is a doppelganger, and she tried to take over Roman's life, and then I guess maybe potentially committed suicide. Uh huh. Is that is that all what Austin's thinking? Um, no, I was actually thinking that Hylia is invisible watching all of this, and she also thinks she knows what's happening and is wrong. <laughs> because that's, you're like, ah, all the clues come together. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think Hylia is a bad person. I think she just has an inflated sense of her own intellect. Um, <laughs> this is a very self-critical character. She's like, mm, yes, uh, from my lofty perch of pure journalism, I can see that uh, uh, this is all exactly according to K. Kaku, and then something it's gonna go terribly <laughs> wrong and she's gonna be very upset um yeah so so uh yeah they they lead uh roman up to the gangplank he's gonna be marched off and he's just going to kind of turn to the general audience of the ship and be like hey y'all if any of you see my brother harper let him know he was the best brother anyone could ask for and uh then he is going to be, you know, has the, the sword poked into the back. He's going to fall off of the gangplank and go into the ocean. I think um, Stranger frowns for a minute as he, um, as he like, starts to put the pieces together, uh, I guess. Um, he, he hasn't met the little girl yet, so he wouldn't have. He does not have what I think the, the situation is yet, but he knows something is off. And he already was suspicious that about the ashes that we had received uh, right at the uh-huh. start, because how could you know in like if depending on how this fire started, what you're actually scooping up at that point? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do, does everybody want to or what does everybody do in this moment? So. OK. But yeah, that that's what she's doing. Uh, Hylia is just taking notes and so forth. She wants this is a big dramatic, uh, you know, painting that she's working into the text. I think, uh, I think uh, so. Stranger has failed his persuasion, so he's not going to try to continue to. But he does want to say to the captain, um, "Your people created gods, yes, out of your own faith, will, right?" Die. Have you ever heard the belief that as long as you remember someone, they're not really dead? Mm, I may have heard someone say that before. You die to death sort of thing. You can choose not to believe me, but in a way, that is what you're experiencing right now. Oh, and (laughs) as if on cue, cannon fire starts rocking this ship as a ship nearby is railing this 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 boat with with cannon fire at a a a sense that you're like this is crazy how quickly this ship showed up there wasn't another ship Mm -hmm. that we saw for miles um i guess i i want to make a do something kind of weird here can i like insight the vibe of i guess the world like is it upset that i am trying to fuck up the parameters a little bit that's that's an amazing question uh give me an insight check 15 uh i will say that's a good that's a good number you don't get the idea that the like world is angry with you that the vibe check is punishing you in any way it is as, more as though the the world is moving very quickly on its script. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say like in Assassin's Creed, when you're in the genetic memory, do we if we get desynced if we start killing civilians? You know, is that anything? Uh-huh. I mean, that's something you can absolutely attempt to do. Like, <laughs> uh, you know. Yeah, I was just. I've stat I've statted <laughs> out out the pirates if you if you want, but you do also know they all die this day. Sure. But yeah, I think I think it's a good mystery. But there, uh, there's there's a relatively narrow genre space we're playing in, <laughs> you know. So there's only so many th- ways this has been done before. Yeah. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, um, I will say that there's uh, now an active combat situation going up on board. 
Uh, you guys can just sit back and watch as uh, I don't want to sit here and spend a bunch of time establishing a, a, an organization we will never meet again. And I guess uh, Austin will at some point during the pirate season. Yeah. Uh, but this this does seem to be some sort of um, not police force, I guess, but sort of like Navy of some kind is just uh, taking it to these pirates at this point. You're sure it's not the Marines? It's not the the world government Marines. <laughs> It's the it's the nautical nannies actually. <laughs> yeah, no, but the, so yeah, the navy's firing on the pirates and they're all, they're obliterating each other. Uh, Lily, and we gave you kind of a point on uh, interrogating the suspect. Is there uh, anything you want to do there? Because I feel like I don't want to step on. This is just like player to player. I don't want to come in and be like, excuse me, Sarah. I would like to do this now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, uh, I would imagine, like, before the cannons, like, started firing, like, Lillian, like, uh, like, Lillian and me, the player, didn't really start connecting any of these dots, so, like, it, it's coming from a very genuine place when Lillian is kind of stopped and, in, like, interrogating any specific questions and is just trying to comfort this t- teenage girl who, from the fair perspective, is just, like, someone that maybe Roman remembers, like, in kind of like a fond, guilty sort of way because something bad happened. Um, I have a question. Have we? Has any of this counted as a short rest because we haven't been fighting? Yeah, you you have been ha- you had the short rest when you were talking to the captain. All right, so I want to establish the way Hylia heals, which is one of the swords in her bundle is extremely long and sharp looking. It is like a a, a, co- a comically dangerous looking katana, and she just drags it across herself, uh, and all of her uh, bark <laughs> begins healing. Paradoxically, she found that out well, <laughs> one day. She doesn't know why it does that, but there's a healing sword. Wow. Okay. Maybe you have to take a note of this one. <laughs> uh, Stranger produces some candy corn from under his hat and eats it. Yeah, Quinn, if you're taking notes, that sword is uh, the Tensiga, T E N S E I G A. But then, yeah, as the, the cannonballs start raining down, she's going to reactivate the thing she did earlier, detect magic. Uh, by she's Actually, what she does is she cuts the air in front of her as if, you know, uh, slicing a veil that was hiding magic from her sight. And she wants to run after Lily. And I just want to see if this. Uh, you know, person who I, we're assuming is a changeling or a doppelganger of some sort, Dumas, if she is actually radiating curse magic or if this just is an unlucky person. Sure. Uh, yeah. How does, how does that work? You're doing uh, an arcana check again, was it? Or what was it? I'm sorry. So the, it's just the effect of detect magic. So I can read you okay. detect magic. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, absolutely redetect uh, magic for the audience. Yeah. Huh? For the duration, you sense the pre- presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object that bears the magic, and you learn its school of magic, if any. So just, just checking if this person is actually radiating a, an evil curse or you know if they just had a spectacularly bad run of luck. Uh, so you run down, you find... Uh... Uh, Lillian talking with this this hooded figure. Um, you do not see any kind of magical aura radiating around this person. At least not any magical one. All right, yeah. So uh, Hylia just like cuts through the air in front of her as if cutting away, you know, the 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 barrier of uh, non magical reality. Sees that there's no aura, and then just says to Lillian. Uh, do you know how to get out of here? This boat is, uh, and then just boom, you know, wall explodes from a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Stranger um, uh, looks at the captain as all this is uh, like <laughs> raining chaos around him and quietly feeds uh, his crow a piece of like dead pirate. <laughs> and goes, oh, <laughs> Seems like your time's running out, Captain. And then he strolls off towards the hold. <laughs> your last, uh, as you're like leaving the ship, you just tear him saying, Never! Captain Don't at the Judgment Day will never die! And then there's like a loud sound as Captain Dolph gets hit by a cannonball that launches him like off the ship. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Fucking Looney Tunes ass death. <laughs> Team Rocket's blasting off again. I take his peg leg. <laughs> all right. You you all have gathered together here. Uh, the violence is starting to die down. 
uh, you you have this this young hooded figure, um, and uh, can I get a perception check from everybody? You would ask for a perception check. Crit. Crit. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Double crits and then a 23. You all fucking destroy this. So you can hear in the distance a voice calling out, Hey, Roman! Roman! Y'all bored, Roman? I, I, I traveled all the way here with the Marines. I'm here to get you, brother. And you can see that this hooded figure hears this and, and looks at you all and is saying, do you think he'll ever forgive me for this? I just didn't want him to be sad. And slowly this person will will pull back their hood and they will they will change from this this white-faced figure into an exact duplicate of Ro- uh, of Roman. Um can we actually talk to the character right now? Yeah, absolutely. You guys crit. You could. You, I wasn't planning for you guys to have conversations with them at this point, but double crit. You can ask them anything. Everything I've seen of Harper makes me believe he would forgive you. Can you forgive yourself? I don't know. Lying like this is 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 pretty bad. Bad, but not illegal. Technically, Hylia <laughs> <Ilya> notes. <laughs> Oh no, identity theft is a crime. Hold on. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's a pretty big betrayal of trust, though, you know? <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm not playing a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> like that, Ilya came in there, like, not illegal, though. <laughs> I, L- Lillian would probably have the line of thought just like, well, like, you were doing this to try to make sure that someone who you didn't even really know wouldn't be stricken with like this horrible grief and now 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 that he thinks that his like I'm kind of speaking out of character his his brother has died in a fire then like he, he's kind of going through this grieving process and like is he like on like I think Lillian's like perspective on this is Harper is like one of the nicest guys on this island and he might be really sad but I don't think that he he could hold it against someone for trying to make it do something that felt like the the right thing to do in the moment Uh uh-huh yeah, uh, I think uh, this this person who at this point you've all kind of uh, correctly assumed is Dumas is going to sort of look at you and say, I really do love him like a brother. How how long of a time period between this and his and uh, Dumas death was there? A couple years. Okay, so it was a while. That's a long wow, time to that... lie about being someone's brother. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I will not lie to you. He will be upset. I suppose it's a question of if he if he is upset with you, at the end of the day, it's our choice if we bring you back or not. Where would you go if you were not with him? See, this is secretly the question I was going to ask, too. Maybe for different Mm -hmm. reasons, though. Because part of me, my my character's selfish desire is like, I want you to stay on the island and tell me about all your shape-shifting adventures for my book. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Which I don't know if it's a healthy thing to do. But that is what she wants. (laughs) That's such an interesting connection between the two. Uh, I love that uh, Dumas is just going to say, well, I don't know. I I kind of been alone my whole life. The only time I really had family was when I was with Harper. So I, I, I don't even know where I'd go. 
I guess wherever I'd be wanted. The kind of people I want to bring back are the kind of people who would stick around and try to support the people they've lied to and make up things to them. So if you were just a coward who'd run away, the world has plenty of cowards. We don't need any more of those. But I'd do anything I could to make it up to Harper. He just I, I know somewhere that you could stay right here on the island until you get get on your feet. Get somewhere that you could uh, call your home, call, call call your own uh, new home, or even just stay here on the island a little bit longer while you're like resituating yourself. Uh, stranger nods and says, "Well, it sounds like you have a desire to return to life and." I guess some sort of repayment plan, even if Harper does not, how should I say, accept you? Do we have what we need to make a decision here? Yeah, so I feel like this is uh, all on agreement. We haven't explicitly said out loud. I feel like all three of us are like, this person didn't really do much wrong besides lying in a uh, weird but understandable way. (laughs) Who hasn't <laughs> pretended to be someone's brother, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I guess this is a question of how, how we go about this. Because there's like a delayed... Because somebody has to physically take the ashes to, I guess, an undersea vent to bring, uh, bring Dumas back, right? Mm-hmm. I think Stranger would almost want to delay actually making the call until they talk to Parper. About this yeah. situation. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, what I'll say is you've all kind of said your piece to Dama at this point. Asked any questions. If there's anything left, let me know. Uh, does anybody have any lingering questions you want to ask? Because the scene's going to end. The stranger's going to ask, what was it like being dead? I ain't have a lick of an idea what you're talking about. Okay, so that that uh, that does give a stranger uh, information he needs that he's not talking to like, I guess the real soul of the person. It's like, <laughs> well, I guess almost like an AI construct in a way. I mean, yeah, there is a spell in D anD D, speak with the dead. We can just do that. This is something else entirely. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that's a useful uh, distinction. Yeah, I get uh, w- one of the things Stranger is curious about is like what is happening here and what is actually coming out when people are being revived. Like, is that actually the same person or just something very, very similar? Just like I've been under the like assumption that this would be the same person being brought back. We're just like vibe checking the essence of who they were as a person to kind of make that call. I guess this is more of like uh, the the transporter uh, discussion from Star Trek is if you are if you go through a transport in Star Trek, is that the same person on the other side or is it just a really close like a one to one clone? It's more like a Silent Hill thing where the the pyramid heads are James's horniness, you know? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's all symbolic of it. The boat's actually a symbol of Dumas' horniness. Right? <laughs> I um, do, I do have one question I wanted to ask Dumas. Is that uh, so? It sounds like we might be going, getting out of here, and like talking to uh, Harper again on the other side. Do you want me to pass any message along? I guess let him know I'm sorry, and I really do care about him he's the only family I really have noted uh and with that we established that the the wall of this ship has been like exploded in (laughs) and like it was blown away you guys can see in the distance another cannonball coming in straight towards you guys at like a high velocity and just as it would like hit impact Everything goes dark for you. And when you come back, you can feel the vines kind of receding from your body as you're standing back inside of the banyan tree. 
I didn't even get to fight any fish. <laughs> I get. I gave you guys the opportunity to fight multiple fish. No one wanted to fight the fish. You were like, oh, let's, watch, let's watch this happen. I think it's funnier if the TV just gets shot by a cannon. <laughs> um, I will say that there is uh, something uh, glowing where you uh, previously placed the, the remains. Oh, damn. Okay, in addition to checking that, which I'm sure is very important, do we keep any of the items we found, like the photograph, the newspaper, the bunny? Is any of that come back in any way? Uh, anything that you would, like, grabbed and put on your person that you have taken through does not appear to be with you in this moment. It appears that, you know, it, it was never in your inventory truly in that, that place. Okay, thank you for the clarification. What is the glowing shiny? So you look over and you see where the remains uh, are still there. This is something like on top of it. There is a stuffed rabbit. Uh, insight check? Is it cursed? Have we awoken the rabbit god? <laughs> are we in trouble? <laughs> uh, also, I have as part of my stone rune, I have advantages on insight checks. So sure. 14. Is uh, this a group insight potentially, or just uh? I I'd say if everybody's looking at it, everybody can roll insight to try to figure this out. Crit twenty eight. Oh, I am the most shit. insightful in the world. Holy shit! Um, so right now you can't exactly understand how it came to be, but you think that this is a gift from the Banyan tree. And there is absolutely something magical about this rabbit. So I want to introduce an element that'll that'll occur as you guys do your vibe checks. There will be items left behind for you afterwards with magical powers associated with the person you brought back. So I have created an item that I fully admit is going to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, I have created an item. Uh, there is this rabbit. I don't know how you guys want to sort of uh, divvy up who gets what. Uh, this item, I think, could easily be uh, a weapon if somebody wanted that, a plus one weapon, or maybe a piece of armor if somebody wanted that. I know Hylia just talked about getting like some kind of relic that would be her, her holy symbol. Um but this item can manifest in different ways. It'll still have sort of the, the symbol of this rabbit in it, but it'll also have a special ability, which is to say uh, once per arc, you can, you can use this feature. If you choose to let the bad luck that follows Dumas around affect you three times, which is to say you automatically fail Whatever you're attempting, whether it's a skill check, an attack roll, a saving throw, whatever, you know, sort of thing you're attempting to do, you choose to fail it. If you do that three times, you could turn any roll, one roll for the rest of the arc into a crit. And that includes attack rolls, skill rolls, all sorts of stuff. That doesn't really sound like it's going to fuck you. I mean, three for one is a pretty uh, a novel exchange, right? It's not like... <laughs> I just... I I know how D&D players are, and I know <laughs> you'll you'll gamify this <laughs> so much. You know me so well. Can I roll to pick my nose and yeah. fail? Can I roll to scratch my butt and fail? <laughs> Can I roll to breathe and fail? Okay, well, now I have the supercharged rabbit mode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will note you will have to determine if you are choosing to take the automatic failure before you roll any dice, basically. Before anyone's rolled any dice. So you can't do, like, a group check and be like, oh, they've already rolled two successes. I wonder if this will, you know... Uh, this, this doesn't even matter. This is a wash or whatever. Yeah, my uh, my uh, intuition here is that Lillian's the one who had the the heart-to-heart -heart with Dumas on the screen, so it makes most sense for Faye to have it, is my first thought. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe I could, like, pick up the rabbit because I, 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 I did feel like, like I did feel like I, I could probably do something with that. I, I, I could probably, like, like I'll, I'll, I'll think on it, but I think that Lillian is going to, like, pick up this little bunny rabbit. Also, you crit to know its power, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, next time uh, you can 
let me know how you want that to be represented in your character. If you want to turn it into a sword or, you know, a helmet or whatever you want it to be, but you have this, this magical gift. And the question now in front of you is what do you three as a group decide to do with, uh, Dumas? Do you bring Dumas back? I think we have to go talk to Harper. <laughs> yeah, I'm. My, my, I'm definitely leaning yes. I just want to run it by Harper because if he's like you, if you did that, you would ruin our friendship forever, and I would hunt you to the ends of the earth. Then I'm like, whoa, whoa, maybe not. We'll see. But assuming he doesn't have an extremely negative reaction, yes. Sure. All right. So uh, the group seems unified. Uh, Lillian, is that how yeah. you also feel? Yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm like, I have a, a, a strong yes. And if Harper seems to react negatively, I'll try to like convince him because it seems like this is a very well-meaning person, even if the lie was kind of big and fucked up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the three of you can absolutely head over towards the gig. Um, you'll pass by Speaker Mox. Uh, who doesn't say anything now, but follows along after you kind of reverently. And uh, you can you can find Harper. Uh, Stranger will want to stop the party right before like we actually get to Harper and say, you two are close friends with this man. Would you prefer if I broke the bad news to him? I was thinking that I might break the news to him because... I, I like I, I I I know him pretty well, and I I feel like if if I, I kind of soften the blow a little bit, it could be it could be we could just open things on the least chaotic note possible. Yeah, Lillian's kind of our talker. You're kind of more of a tell someone they're about to die, or and that the vibes of that uh, don't seem great to me. So, if you believe that is best, then you proceed as you wish. So how I want to go about this is I'm not super sure how to t- how to say it like in character, but I know that like Lillian would like we we would all come up together because this is like a conversation that the group wants to have with Harper, and mm-hmm. kind of like come up to him like say hi like and just kind of like be like. Like, hey y'all! <laughs> Just hey. How's it all going? You know what I was thinking about? Well, I had no idea how we'd even do it, but wouldn't it be neat if we had like a hockey rink here? Oh, a, a, a hockey rink would be very fun. That could be fun. Yes, yes, yes. Dangerous to the plants to have that ice, don't you think? Well, I feel like hung off over the side of everything. I ain't no magic woohoo, but. I feel like someone could do that, right? We could get like a little patch of ice that hung off to the side of the island, and you know we could you know we curate it, make sure it's all safe, nobody be falling through, and then you know, we could have hockey. Wouldn't that be fun? Like an infinity pool? I <laughs> I don't know what that is, but sure. <laughs> I do think with uh, the introduction of hockey, you might in- up the incidence of people that would need to be revived, but it does sound quite fun. <laughs> oh, hockey ain't that deadly. You get a couple loose teeth every now and then, but that builds character. You don't need all your teeth to shuck a, a, an ear of corn, you know? Personally, I think I'd have uh, a few more things lost if I got body checked by Hylia. Oh, wow. Look at me. I'm Dan. <laughs> I've read the list of hockey players who died during games. Wikipedia page. Ooh, it's only... Oh, damn. Oh, it's really long. Oh, it's so long. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. I also haven't read that. I was making a bit, but I do know it's probably a lot. It's way more... This can't be real. How is this so long? Is it, is it a lot of throat sla- slashings? I imagine it's a lot of skates to that, the throat. That, that literally just happened like within the past week. A player died because he <laughs> oh, got his, no. his throat slashed. Hockey that's awful. players who died. Well, I guess that's eventually all of them. <laughs> it's like, which hockey players have died in a, like, a shockingly huge number thanks to Father Time? Christ. That's crazy. There's only one NFL player who died in the field, Chuck Hughes. So it's one to twenty-three sports wise. I don't know if we need I'm leaving this in here. Damar Hamlin did almost meet the Reaper. They shook hands. 
Oh my god. I am sorry, Lillian, I interrupted you. <laughs> but that's that's what he's thinking. He's just babbling. He's just like, oh, wouldn't it be nice having a hockey for you? That'd be pretty uh-huh. sweet. Yeah. It, it it would. So so we just got back from the banyan tree, and I would like to say that there is uh, good news, bad news is such a uh pedantic, like like bad way to put it. You know me, I always love getting the good news first. The good nothing will, nothing will bring me down from that. <laughs> the good news is that we can bring back the ashes that you gave us. The bad news is that the ashes you gave us were not Roman as you knew him. Wow. Y'all have me confused. I-, I ain't sure I'm following. The person for the last few years that you've known as Roman was actually somebody who saw Roman die back on that pirate ship. So it would it would just somebody pretending to be my brother? It was someone Roman died to protect. They didn't want you to be sad. And they did apologize for the record. And y'all saying my brother can't be brought back then? Unfortunately, Unfortunately no. no. We've said at the same time. <laughs> well, shucks. There goes my power forward. <laughs> it would be <laughs> the all, it'd be very great if the all shucks, all G's guy <laughs> getting the worst news of his life was just like, cunt. <laughs> I stay now I cuss for real. <laughs> uh, I've been unleashed. Uh, Harper is just gonna look uh kind of sad and be like, Well, y'all have given me Quite a mix of news to process. Um, well, what are y'all planning to do with the person who was pretending to be a uh, Roman? Well, we wanted to talk to you about it first. Uh, they did give me a message to give you. Uh, their name is Duma, by the way. And they said, she said that she's very sorry about what she did, and she only wanted to make sure that you weren't sad about what happened, and she does genuinely think of you as a brother after this time that that you've spent together. Hmm. You know, I always did think my brother acted a little bit weird after being rescued from the ship, but I just chalked it up to surviving a near-death incident. I guess I had a lot of good times with Dumas. Dumas. Uh, Dumas. Uh, Maybe I didn't really get to know who they are, really, but I don't know. I guess I miss both versions of my brother. I... I guess I ain't the vibe check person, though. That's all y'all's prerogative to decide. Would you want them back? I mean, if you ask me, sure, but it's all on y'all, right? I mean, if the only thing was the person wanting them back, you'd be bringing back everybody, but I think the choice is on you if it's the right person to be bringing back. I suppose, but... I believe, since you are the one who made the petition, you can withdraw the request if you so choose. Nah, I I won't be doing that. I mean, I, you know, I ain't a huge fan of liars, but, you know, I wouldn't take someone's chance away just because of that. So if Dumas is brought back, will you assist this person after a time they are coming back with no connections whatsoever will you be weird about besides it besides you <laughs> <laughs> nah I, you know they'd be another member of this wonderful community that I call home now so 
I'll do my best to make sure they're treated fairly, with decency and respect, and that they learn how to play hockey so that we have, you know, a functioning team, a good balance of players of all shapes and sizes. Is this person a giant? Was this like a giant, maybe? She she is about... For like a goalie? And you can see he's like kind of crossed his fingers a little bit. I <laughs> am. <laughs> you fucking... Harper, look at me. I'm the goalie, you dipshit. I, I think you might go through the ice, Hylia. Yeah, that's called the bonus round. And that, <laughs> you get double points if you're under the ice. Learn a single thing, stranger. Look, do I look like someone who can play hockey? I weigh like 50 pounds. Yeah, you look like someone who plays for the Montreal Canadiens, bitch. Damn, bear. <laughs> oh, Montreal Canadiens. That feels excessively redundant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their 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 place in the league is redundant. They should be replaced by let's bring damn. Let's bring back the Atlanta Thrashers. I miss the Atlanta Thrashers. I think I think it sounds like we're basically all in agreement that we would like to bring Dema back to life. Uh, I think Stranger, prop, once he sees that he's not uh, that two people are voting to bring her back, uh, he just nods but doesn't say anything. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I think Lillian is approaching this in good faith with an open heart. I think uh, Hylia wants uh, Duma for her stories, <laughs> so <laughs> compromised. And I think Stranger is playing it close to the chest. We've known since the beginning that you're, you, you were going to be the more cynical position, and we don't really know what your whole f- fucking deal is. <laughs> so I'm going to mm-hmm. keep chipping away at you. He, yeah, He's gotten what he's needed uh, since effectively the gig and Harper are taking responsibility for the time being. All right. Well, does anybody have anything to do or anything they want to say? I feel like this is we're wrapping up here because this is going to be the end of your first vibe check. I think a stranger will turn to Mox and ask, what would you have done? Mm, Interesting question there. I didn't get to see what y'all saw inside of the tree, but if y'all saying that this person was sorry for what they did and how they lied, then I'd bring them back. What's the tree for if not bringing back people from accidents, you know? And he kind of looks over to uh, Lillian as he says that. Just, I, 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 I think that it's going to be a wonderful thing that we can bring Dema back. I, I think that like you said, it, everyone who who died fr- from something like this terrible accident, they do. De- I think they do deserve to come back. For me, the more interesting question, I guess I'm saying this in character, is would we still bring her back if she was actually cursed? If, if there was a magical aura around her that could not be dispelled, which brought death wherever she went? Um, as far as we know, that's not true, but it seemed like a real possibility. And I'm curious how our morality would hold up to our self-preservation. I, th- I, th- I, th- I think if it was an actual literal curse, there's probably somebody we could try to find. She said that she was pretty much alone for a lot of her life. So like, that means maybe she didn't get a chance to talk to anybody who knew how to take care of it. Sure, that's a perfectly nice practical answer is that we would try to get rid of the curse. I'm curious if we, if we all would stand on our moral high ground that this person deserves to be brought back if there was a real chance we would all be shredded by Navy cannon fire in response. The first thing you said to me, Hylia, when I asked what your criteria was is that if the world would be a better place if they were here. Do you believe that they would be the world would be a better place in that scenario? I mean, I don't want, want to sound like an asshole, but I think uh, someone who spends a lot of their time lying and has a AOE death radius mathematically kind of makes the world a little worse, even if it isn't their fault. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian's first response is like, uh, may, may, maybe you don't mean to sound like that, but it, it <laughs> kind of comes across that way. 
As I said when we first met, we are choosing who to kill. And I believe that would be a completely fair choice. Frankly, um, I, I think at this point we've probably passed away from Harper. Yeah. <laughs> the stranger yeah. would not say this near him. If it is a question of what good they bring into the world, we have no idea if this person would. I do not know if they actually pass that criteria. Yeah, sorry to complicate our victory. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we won with flying colors, and then I turn around and say, uh, yeah, but what if, though? What if she was fucked? Uh, but I'm just, I'm just curious how you all feel about that, so... Just, I think Lillian would personally think, thinking of it as like, if you can bring something good into the world sounds a little bit too close to, can this person be useful in the world? And Faye is not a super big fan of that. Is this the question of use or is it a question of safety? I don't think it needs to be pointed out. I think Lillian is a better person than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, he'll, he'll turn to Lillian and say, um, my job uh, in my previous life was to tend to the raising and growth of young harvest kin. On average, you can get about five per seed. If one of them falls to disease, it can kill the entire vine. Do you cull the sick and ri and save all four? Or do you risk all five for the sake of one? Just that, that's... Hmm. That is... You will only ever know if you've made the wrong choice. Austin, this is an episode yet to end with dry, dry docks. <laughs> <laughs> or dry, dry docks. As I'm going to say, um, strange Dan, that um, Stranger asks this question, and Lillian, like, doesn't super have a good answer, because Faye's mostly just going to make this really, like, concerned thinking face. Like, n like in character, Faye doesn't really know what even to say to that. And, like, out of character, I also don't super know what to say to that. <laughs> That's why I asked it. <laughs> yep. Tough questions. <laughs> <laughs>